In this video, I'll explain the steps you'll need to take to set up your own mini qubit. If you don't know what the mini qubit is, you can check out my first video in this series, which explains the vehicle configuration, and the second video, which shows how I adapted a dual camera setup to the mini qubit in order to fly in FPV mode, which is my preferred mode of flying it. Now, a lot of what I'll explain in this video can be applied to a standard quadcopter that you add wings to, so don't think that this is limited just to the mini qubit. But in this video, we'll focus on how to set everything up specifically for the mini qubit. To start, you'll need all the parts to build it. For that, you can 3D print the frame and build the wings using foam board. There may be other ways to make the wings, so just feel free to try other stuff out like 3D printing the wings for instance. I'll have all the STL files to the parts down below. But if you're interested in buying the wings, the frame, or the nose cone, you can email me directly here and we can go from there. Now, before I start, I just want to say there's a lot of backwards hacking going on here in order to get this thing to work. It can all be done via beta flight, which is nice, but there are several steps you have to follow. So let's first start with electronics. There's a variety of flight controllers that can work with this frame, but the frame was designed for a 20 by 20 stack flight controller, a 4-in-1 ESC, and a VTX combo. So double check that all your stuff can fit these dimensions before buying something. Setting all of that up is pretty straightforward if you set up a quadcopter with beta flight before, so I'm not going to cover any of that since there's plenty of videos on that already. What I am going to cover is the dual camera switching and all of the control mixes in beta flight and on the transmitter that you'll need to do in order to get the mini qubit working. So first, you'll need two cameras. I'm using a $20 run cam from Amazon, which will fit the frame nicely, and I have it mounted with some foam tape to the front, and I use the included mount that comes with the camera to secure the camera in the nose cone for the upward facing camera. The last thing you'll need is the two channel video switching module to switch between the two camera feeds. Sometimes flight controllers already have this two camera switch output already set up in the flight controller, so just check and see if yours already has the ability to switch between two cameras before buying one of these. Mine did not, so I went ahead and bought one. To wire the camera switching module to the flight controller, you'll need to first plug the two cameras into the AVN1 and AVN2 ports. The order does not matter for this. Then plug in the cameras in the camera switching module into a 5 volt and ground source somewhere on the flight controller. Next, plug the pad labeled AV out into the cam port on the flight controller. Lastly, plug the PWM signal into any available PWM output pad on your flight controller. Mine did not have any PWM output pads, as most beta flight boards do not. So use the LED pad on the flight controller instead, which we will rewrite in beta flight to be a PWM servo output in order to send the command to the camera switching module, which will switch the video feed. Now, with all of that set up, we can get into the beta flight portion of this. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to attach the diff all dump and CLI dump from beta flight in the description below so that you don't have to configure everything manually. All right, so here we are in beta flight. I have my quadcopter plugged in, uh, connected to COM3, so we're gonna go ahead and hit connect. We'll go down to the CLI tab and we will copy all of the uh, configurations from the CLI dump, which I have attached to this video in the uh, description. So we're going to go ahead and copy all of that and paste it into the CLI and then hit enter. And what, a, what this does essentially is it takes all of the configurations from the mini qubit, which is everything that you need in order to get this to work, uh, and it just automatically sets everything up. And so instead of you having to go through all these tabs and me showing you how to do each thing individually, it'll just sort of do it all on its own, which is really nice. Um, it also makes you feel like a super duper cool coder guy. Um, but anyway, th the last thing you have to do once you do that is hit is type in save and then enter. So that'll save all those configurations. And then we'll hit connect again. Um, and so now I'll just sort of walk you through the different uh, configurations which should now be set up on your quadcopter. So first thing we want to do is enable expert mode so that we get these other tabs in here. Um, and so the first thing we'll look at is the receiver. Um, so let me turn on my transmitter and plug a battery into my quadcopter. So this works. So Right off the bat, we have an aux one. So we have roll and all that stuff already set up here. You might need to change some of these things, um, by the way, in the configuration tab, for instance. Uh, like, for instance, if your flight controller is mounted slightly differently than, than mine is, you might need to change some of these things, um, depending on your specific setup. But for me, I have the aux one set up to be my arming switch. 
And then I have aux 2, which is set to a three position switch to be my hover to forward flight transition, transition switch. Um, and so essentially when I'm at its lowest value here, I'm in hover, and then these next two values are uh, for forward flight mode. If this was a two position switch, it would work just as well. I'm using a three position switch because I ran out of two position switches. Um, so the second thing we'll look at here is the modes tab. Um, what we see here is the arm switch um, is connected here to aux 1, and then we have an angle switch here, which is connected to the aux 2 uh, three position switch. So what we see is that in hover, we are in angle mode, and then we, when we go out of hover into forward flight, angle mode is turned off, which is good, because we don't want it self-leveling in forward flight mode because we're not a quadcopter anymore, we're a, a biplane. So if we go into the adjustments tab, this is where I have uh, it set up to essentially change the I values um, in the PID settings. So essentially what it does when I turn this, so here we are in hover again with the three position switch and aux two. Um, and then when I go into forward flight, it's these two values here. So what we're essentially doing is we're using this adjustments tab, which is generally supposed to just be used for essentially just uh, tuning your quadcopter. But we're kind of doing a backward tack on this, and we're just using it to set the I value to different values uh, that we would like. So instead of changing the value um, with a potentiometer on the transmitter, we're just fixing it to a, a static value. So here we have uh, it adjusting the roll I term, the yaw I term, and the pitch I term. And if we go into the PID settings, what we'll see is that in uh, hover, we have an integral term, which is 90, 80, and 40. And then when we go into forward flight and I flip the switch on aux 2 and we hit refresh, now uh, our I term is, is 1, which is good. So essentially what it does is uh, in quadcopter mode and hover mode, we have an I term which is um, has an actual value to it. So it's constantly trying to correct itself um, in, in order to help it hover. But when we're in forward flight mode, we don't want that to occur because it essentially builds up error and the quadcopter gets really confused because it's flying like an airplane and not a quadcopter. So that's why you do this. Um, It'll fly without, if, if you don't have this set up, um, if you don't want to set up this PID uh, switching, um, you don't have to do it. Uh, but what I would recommend is that you set your I term to be one for both hover and forward flight. Okay. Um, the second thing we'll look at is the servos tab. So this is, again, also connected to aux 2, because, again, we're using that to switch from hover to forward flight. And what we're using the servo tab for is to send a PWM signal through the LED port on the flight controller in order to switch the uh, camera feed from the forward-facing camera to the upward-facing camera. Um, and so if you go into the CLI, um, or you can look at the CLI dump, you'll see that my um, motor, one of the uh, LED strips is um, redirected to an LED, uh, or sorry, one of the LED, the LED strip in Betaflight is uh, redirected to be a servo output instead so that we can get a PWM signal out of it. Um, and so the reason we do that is because when we go into the motors tab, you can see the servo here and servo one, and you'll see it's changing when I flip that switch. And that PWM, PWM signal is being uh, written to the camera switching module um, in order to switch the camera feed. The last thing is the OSD tab. Um, you can, you know, do this on your own, but essentially. Uh, I, th I have this set up so that it will switch um, the OSD slightly so that when you're uh, in hover, it'll show the, hut, the heads up display, and then when you're in forward flight, it'll get rid of it. Or, uh, yeah, uh, and it'll maybe, I think I have it change some of these values as well, but yeah, not super important. The, the most important thing is to make sure that you have this servo thing set up and that you have it redirected in the CLI. Um, if you have questions on that, there's, you can you know write a comment below and I'll try and answer it, but um, there are videos online for explaining how to redirect the LED uh, sh array in beta flight to be a servo output instead. Okay, that's that. Um, 
the next thing we'll do is we'll show the transmitter and how to set that up um, because there are some uh, interesting things that I have set up here so that when we're in forward flight, uh, it's a little bit easier to fly, um, essentially just some control mixes. So let's show that to you now. All right, so I'm using a Tyrannus, an FR Sky Tyrannus Plus. Um, you can use any transmitter really as long as it's got uh, two switches and the ability to do some control mixes. So what I'll show you first is how um, I have the control mixes set up in here. Uh, so for that I'm going to show you uh, the channel monitoring map down here. So I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit here so you can see that a bit better. So essentially what I have it do, so currently we're in hover, so my channel 2 is my aileron and then my channel 4 is my rudder. The pitch should be channel 3, uh, throttle channel 1, and those the, th the throttle and the pitch you should leave just the way they are for both hover and forward flight. Um, but where it gets kind of interesting is when we switch to forward flight because we need to do some control mixing in here because the vehicle orientation is such that the roll and the yaw flip and the roll reverses. So let me show you that. So essentially this is again hover so uh, we'll first show you the rudder actually yeah I'll first show you the rudder so that is channel 4 here. Um, so when I'm all the way to the left and I flip the switch up here, which is my um, switch to switch from hover to forward flight, when I switch this up into forward flight, now it gets redirected to channel 2. Okay, but the direction is the same. The only difference here is that the uh, channel mapping is switched from channel 4 to channel 2. And it's the same when I go the other way. So again, back into hover. This is hover, and this is forward flight. Okay. So I'll show you the aileron now. So again, in hover. So here is here it is uh, giving an input to channel two in hover. But when I switch it to forward flight again by flipping my switch, now it'll switch from channel two to channel 4, but not only does it do that, but it also reverses it. So this is something you have to make sure that you do, um, uh, because it's just the way that the body angles work out that you need to reverse your ailerons. So I'll show that again. So in hover, we're like this. So this is your hover switch, your hover mode. And then when we go into forward flight, It'll be like it should be like that. The reason I'm showing you this is because the procedure is something that you should probably have to figure out on your own um, because every transmitter is different. Uh, but the what needs to happen with the control remapping is the same. So that's why I'm showing you this. But if you do have a Tyrannus, I'll show you how I set that up in the Tyrannus. So I'm going to go over to um, the control mixes tab. So that's this, the mixer tab. So essentially what I have is, um, you can just look at this and basically just copy what I do. But for the rudder tab, which is on channel two, I just essentially click and hold this, I copy it, and then I move it down and then to here. And then I make sure that I set this switch, which is SC, which is my switch to flip it from hover to forward flight, um, in order to tell it that, hey, when my switch is down, you should do this. When my switch is in the middle, you should do this. And then again, because I have a stupid three position switch, I have to, you know, do the, um, I have to do it, put in another input just to cover that too. But if you have a two position switch, it'll be a lot easier. Um, but it's the same thing with the aileron. So um, again, it's the SC switch. You just sort of copy that, paste it, redirect it. Um, by, I'll show you that. So this is minus 100 in here, whereas the um, hover should just be 100. And you, again, you should copy that from above. But anyway, essentially just copy what I do here as best you can. Um, I'm not super f 
uh, well averse with the mixer tab otherwise i'd explain it to you a lot of this is troubleshooting on my end <laughs> um but if you can if hopefully looking at this stuff will help you figure out how to do it on your own okay that's that with the transmitter so once you have the beta flight board set up properly to the right switches and you have the uh, control mixing set up properly on your transmitter, you should be able to go out and go fly. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try and do my best to help you. Otherwise, I hope this video is helpful to you in figuring out how to set up your own mini qubit with a dual camera switching setup. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.